pitch to yeah. the board. So so that's how, how they recruit them. Oh, I put them on this council. And then if you do your work, so you're a good citizen. Um, you get a pot in the glass to the end. And that's sort of like 30 bucks a box. Yeah. Of course, it's free for them, but, uh, you know, it's nice. So I already booked my flight just in case. But yeah, I, I, I don't know, I didn't necessarily get too far behind. Yeah. But I looked at it, I was planning to do it Thanksgiving weekend, and then last week I was planning. So I look at it Sunday, I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah, not really. Oh, shoot. Not so bad, but, you know, it's like, I can knock out 20, 20 oh, crazy. No. So over the past two and a half days, okay. I've seen this type of flower. Grammy. They come like 31 or so we play them. And they're doing front. No, like, yeah. you know, 30 left, I'll probably knock them all out today. Well, we're making good progress. Yeah. But it's, uh, I'm a little, since I stayed up late to do that, um, Little discombobulated, yeah, exactly. Less than I'm less conscious than my otherwise. And then zoom our I do think you can like for the start. You're close to the X, looks like you're the person this time. Welcome, Whatever. everybody. All right, good morning. Oh, if you haven't uh checked in yet, you may do that with the little barcode thing. If you're online, you can find it somewhere. Go to one million cups.com forward slash Albuquerque and uh, there's a check in button on the main screen. Um, yeah. So, uh, as a side note on that, are you working on the one night one MC.abq? Not working hard. Okay. I'll send another email before the end of the year. Great. All right. So, this could be a shorter way. We're not worried about that. Uh, welcome to uh, One Million Cups. So this, uh, for those around here, there's a little QR code you can find laying around. You become a member if you haven't already. Um, and we don't really send out mass emails. This is the guy that sends emails. So he's the one to yell at if you get more than you want, which you send one a month, <laughs> if that. A couple of months, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I don't get them. So, I mean, they go through a different file and I don't see them. So. It's a thing, but uh, the membership isn't is just so we can count and say that people are here and uh, encourage this free uh, thing that we get to do and build community and communicate that way. This is yeah, the crosshair is not gonna work. Um, this year, oh look at this, I'm reading the thing. It's my own words supposed to be. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the mission of one million cups is. We're trying to bring community together uh, about business. You know, there's lots of people that focus on different things um, when they get into groups. And if you're in business, it's usually about pitching things. And if you're into social, uh, you know, endeavors, it's usually about trying to solve someone's, you know, personal problems or something. So this is kind of a weird thing where we're kind of putting both together. And we're as a group, as a community, we're focusing on people that are building the community by making business happen. Um, you know, if you think back to uh, one of the reasons they think that India was thriving so much before the Britons was because of their interaction about business. That was what was keeping the peace. It's one of the philosophies. So we're going to keep the peace by making business happen. Isn't that cool? All right. So I'm just going to put the game there. All right. All right. Thanks. Um, so uh, we're a national movement. Uh, it was started out of um, Missouri. Um, and they, can, they work within the, the nation, but the idea is that this is funded by the Kauffman Foundation, and what we do in each place is focused on our individual communities, our local communities, because that's where we can really grow business. Even though we also are across the nation, there's, um, because we're hybrid, like people online, um, we can actually reach out and meet any of these other folks. Um, and we can also have people come present from far away. <clears throat> we like to have people that are local, which is really great, especially because we have a big local area here in New Mexico. We are the one million cups. And so the key pillars here are presentations. We're here to talk about our businesses and bring out uh, some struggles that we can share and talk about. 
and build up the community, create some creative tension around that, as opposed to just telling you, I know everything and my business is great. Um, the authentic connections and not networking. So at a lot of networking events, it's a lot of business card handing around. And here we really like to kind of develop more of a conversation about how we can help each other and what we're doing. Um, and for run for the community, by the community. So we've got these volunteers I'll introduce in a moment. And we're radically and intentionally inclusive. So we want everyone to come. And if you have a problem with that, then this isn't the place for you. Uh, we have a mission statement here. And it's basically saying that we are going to work together. We're going to be a little vulnerable. Vulnerable is in like that we're going to talk about the problems we're having in our business and not just talk about, you know, you want to buy my stuff. You want to buy my stuff, right? Because if we're really talking about the, the struggles inside of our business, we can see how real that business is too, which is kind of a neat thing. It's also one of the reasons that I. Is that even turned on? Adam? You know what? That's a great question. <laughs> This is me being vulnerable. <laughs> uh, okay, so these are the volunteers. We've got our uh, chief scientific officer for a um, sequencing company for, for DNA on horses. That's Paul. Lisa is takes care of Fat Pipe here and Bioscience Center and makes all kinds of great things happen, as well as helping out. Um, and she's also our lead. We've got Eric. In the back taking photos i think um and he is all about doing out doing ecosystem stuff for the uh, business world especially locally there's me i'm the founder of a uh, brain organization company and i've got down here uh sonia sonia online yes yeah, sonia's online yeah. and she is going to help you figure out how to tell your story whether it's a fictional one or your own and make that happen So we have these sponsors, Fat Pipe has been hosting us since the beginning. Uh, and so we get to use this space, which, which has really been great. Jason comes in and makes uh, great photos and makes us look a little sharp on the uh, social networks. Uh, more than organized, she brings in some creamer so that we can uh, really make that uh, our, our coffee for those that do that, um, you know, taste really nice. And she is um, Miriam. And down here we've got uh, we get coffee. These, these guys do coffee, the Foundation for Sustainable Living. Um, but the coffee we get is stuff they just sponsor, since they can't directly send it to us because of things. And so Noventum's custom software is also our donut guy. He's back here, Brian. And what invite is here? They They're bring us. Here. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. All righty. Miss Sonia, I believe that you coached our presenter today. Do you want to do an introduction? So I totally messed up. I did not, I did not coach them. <laughs> So this morning's presentation might be kind of interesting. I totally forgot they were presenting today. So this is totally my fault. Um, well, since, uh, that's vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> the Startup Factory has been here before and sponsored other entrepreneurs. They know the drill. So um, I'm sure everything is great. We've got Leisha Martin online and um, she's going to give our presentation. So let me share my screen. Get her slide deck up. Right. Everyone online see the screen? Yep. All righty. I'm going to leave the verbiage here at the bottom so you can see the stuff on the screen. And let me make sure you can all see Alicia. Okay, Alicia, kick it off for us. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for letting me zoom in. I have one worker in the lab and it's not really safe for me to leave her alone, but it's nice to see everybody here. Um, this is our company, MNT Shine. MNT stands for Magnetic Nanotechnology, and we are a dental oral care company. 
Um, you can go ahead and go on. This is a collaboration with various universities. This is our scientific team. We have, I am a nanomaterial engineer and nanotoxicologist. So I focus on nanomaterials for biomedical applications. Um, we also have uh, regenerative medicine experts from Northwestern. We have mechanical, computer, and electrical engineers. We have a dentist at the UK um, Bristol School of Dentistry. And then we have a pharmaceutics professor also on our scientific team. You can go ahead and go on. Um, this is our business team. We have a very nice team here. Melissa and Andrea, I think, are on site. You can tell them hello. They're awesome. And then um, Dr. Lee is also a former entrepreneur, and he is working on the scientific end as well. Go ahead and go on. John Travis is here too for you. Oh, is John on site too? Yeah, John also. So our product is a magnetic nanoparticle toothpaste and mouth rinse, and it's gonna be in combination with a magnetic toothbrush. So we're tired of toothpaste that just sit there. The job of the toothpaste is it has abrasives in there. It's supposed to scrub and clean your teeth. We have the technology to make these particles in the toothpaste move, so why aren't we doing it? And this is a huge problem, um, cleaning, especially people with braces or orthodontic devices. People have permanent wires, and it's very difficult to clean in the places where the brush can't reach to mechanically scrub. But the particles in this toothpaste can, and then we can remote control them with a magnetic field in a toothbrush that they can go where they need to, and they can scrub without the bristles actually having to reach these places. Um, so this is a huge problem, and especially you know with teenagers with braces poor cleaning a lot of times they have to remove the braces in order to do proper cleaning it's costly um, people sue the orthodontist because they don't like the outcome and so on so these are mainly our customers but it could also be people with bleeding gums and gingivitis this is also an antimicrobial product um, you can go on <coughs> sorry <laughs> Um, these sorry, are the, nanoparticles. the nanoparticles are a billionth of a meter. So on the tip of one of my hairs, I can <laughs> fit about 500,000 of these particles just on the tip of my hair. So that's how tiny they are. So they're able to diffuse into places where normal antimicrobials can't go. Um, you can go on, please. Next slide. This is some... Um, images of the efficacy. So if you scratch your teeth, you have some gunk on your teeth, those are biofilms. Those are bacterial communities that live there. And they're very difficult to eradicate because they have kind of like a goo that they produce that protects them from abrasives, from your immune system, and from antibiotics. So because these particles in the toothpaste are so tiny, they're able to diffuse in there and pretty much wipe out these biofilms on your teeth. You can go on to the next slide. This is just some data comparing to Listerine Coolmint, which we're told kills 99% of bacteria. So that 99% of bacteria are not the biofilms. They're not the ones in the little sticky matrix that actually cause problems on your teeth. Those are free bacteria, but you can see our product, which is in red, pretty much wipes out um, more bacteria than Listerine in half the time. Go ahead and go on. And we're looking, like I said, focusing first on the orthodontic market and then branching out from there. If we have 10,000 doctors with about 300 starts per year of brackets and wires, $6,000 per treatment, which lasts an average of three years, and 30% end up with what we would consider a treatment failure just because of the white spot prevalence, which is basically because of poor cleaning, the teeth start to demineralize. And this is very difficult to reverse. So this is, you know, a loss of patient satisfaction. And this is a loss of about 1 million patients minimum or just under 6 billion at any time point. So this is a huge, huge problem that we could address with our product. Um, the clear aligners are starting to take off. They're becoming really popular. The Invisalign um, intellectual property or their patents expired. And now there's tons of competition in that market. Um, you can go ahead and go on. And this is our plan. Um, dental companies 
are used to using distributors. They have salespeople that go in and talk to the doctors and harass them. And a lot of my friends are dentists and they hate these salespeople, but these are the people that they typically buy things from. And this is what they're used to. So we're planning on going through a distributor that does the marketing sales and so on to the practitioner. And then the parents, about 75% of orthodontic patients are still adolescents or under 18. So in most cases, it's going to be the parents that are going to be a decision maker and then the patients. So one out of every four orthodontic patients are adults. So we could also maybe skip over the parent step and go straight to the patients in some cases. After we branch out from the orthodontic market, this is going to be different, but I just wanted to add that. So I um, was previously with UNM where most of this technology was originally developed. And then we spun off into the startup company with John and Andrea, and we're working on getting this commercialized. Thank you, Alicia. I'm gonna take your slides. Okay. Uh, that is a fascinating product. I love that. So I think Sonia wanted to go first online. Perfect. Yeah, she has a poll. Sonia, you have questions? Yes. Uh, so, Alicia, first of all, awesome presentation. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you for making it so great. Um, my question would be: so, I wanted, I wanted to get, well, I wanted, and I wanted the audience to get to know you just a little bit more. Which, so, my question is: number one, what was that specialty you're in again, and how did you get there? Because it sounded really interesting. So, I am from Pawaka, New Mexico. Um, I went to UNM. The whole reason I got involved in this is I went to Africa for a delegation on medicine and I saw people with extreme drug resistant tuberculosis and they just stay locked in the hospital. They can't have visitors. No one can go in and out without full PPE and they're just locked in there till they die. So I was like, somebody needs to come up with some kind of treatment for this extreme drug resistant tuberculosis. And I originally started working on nanoparticles for antibiotic resistant bacterial infections. I worked on cystic fibrosis um, and this material was effective for, you know, the drug resistance in cystic fibrosis lung diseases. And then we later extended it out to other kinds of biofilm treatments like dentistry, which <laughs> that was never my plan, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's really interesting. I love it. Right. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, and, and see, that was a very interesting story. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. that. All right, and then so uh, if anyone else has questions, let's go for we'll, it. We'll let Sue go next, and then we'll have Paul up. Yeah, I, I find this fascinating too. Um, so I'm not sure how close you are to market, but have you contacted like the larger dental distributors like Henry Schein and Patterson? So um, we're right now we're deciding which regulatory pathway we're going to focus on. If we want to do medical device, it's going to be a lot faster or, you know, cosmetic would be even faster, but we want the customer to trust us. But I have talked to several companies. I've talked to 3M, which is one of the, has one of the biggest parts of the market share, Align, Dent Supply, and Orthozone. So those are the main distributors I've, I've talked to so far. We're just trying to figure out, you know, the regulatory pathway and where we're going to go from here. Okay. And my other question, what are the risks, if any, in, in using this product? So we have not at this point done a human clinical trial. So I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's a huge chance that you could fail in first the preclinical trial, which we're in the preclinical phase right now. So far, everything looks good. And then in the clinical trial, you know, there's a, there's a big chance that a product will fail or will have to change, you know, the concentration or the dose or, you know, um, like the treatment regime, like maybe do once a week instead of every day. So those are things we all need to figure out, but there are ways, you know, to, to make it work. It's just, it's just hard to say at this, at this stage without a clinical trial. Yeah. And that, and there's quite a cost for clinicals. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> I think they average like a billion dollars right now. So. Oh. Thanks, Sue. Hi, uh, I'm Paul Sauter, founder and chief scientific officer of Equiseek. We develop and sell genetic tests for horses. So I want to ask you about your patent coverage. So uh, how are you for international patents? So the antimicrobial nanoparticle has a world patent. 
I also have another one, um, the one for cystic fibrosis. And then the material, all those are fully covered. I also have two more that are pending right now. Um, we got all these in in time, <laughs> which is awesome. I have another one that was for a separate thing for water purification that was just a little bit too late to get the world coverage. You know, they're going to go to China and make it there. So I don't know if that's if I'm going to be able to commercialize that one. But these ones are all covered. And you've briefly mentioned um, other applications in the treatment of biofilms. Do you see any other applications for these particles? Oh, definitely. So one of the things we're looking at is coatings for things like stents, uh, indwelling catheters, things like that, where especially where internal biofilms are a risk. Um, the other thing, like I told you, was the lung application. So that would be in an inhalation aerosol, like, you know, like an inhaler. You breathe it in and then we can manipulate it that way. So those are the main applications we're looking at right now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Very cool. Hi, I'm Dr. Norm Dawson. I am with my own company, Dr. Norm, Connections.com. I'm in the dementia prevention business. However, I've had a long history with personal care products. So my first question, and if it's yes or no, then I won't ask you the second question. But the first question <laughs> is, is this going to be a prescription item only, or is it going to be more of a personal care kind of a product? So the first application we're looking at is going to be an in-office treatment done at the dentist's office. And in the future, we might branch out to an OTC product. So our regulatory people are looking at that right now. But that's our first thing is going to be, actually, it's going to be applied by the dentist or hygienist in the office. Sure. Okay, then that allows me to ask the second question. Is it okay. going to be an OTC product in the future? Have you considered an affiliate program as a distribution method? That's a $17 billion industry right now where patient becomes a raving fan and says, wow, you ought to try this, refers to somebody else. The patient gets a little bit of a kickback and so does the dentist. And then it just kind of spreads out. So is that a consideration you've ever even thought about? No, I've never even thought about that, but that sounds very exciting. Okay. Well, let me know if you need more information. I'm affiliated with an international company that might be really interested in this product. Oh, yes. I definitely would love to talk to you more. Good night. Thank yes. you. Have a question online, you can unmute and ask. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I just wondered for uh, some of us older generation who have metal fillings, would there be any competition or contraindications with the nanoparticles, which are comprised of similar materials? No, we haven't seen any problem in vitro with fillings or, um, like I said, like the orthodontic wires or any metal in the mouth. So the particles are functionalized so that they have similar chemistry to the biofilm. So they're going to preferentially go and stick in and around those biofilms, not so much on necessarily like the inert devices or the mammalian, like your own tissue. Or also, they don't tend to disrupt your beneficial bacteria in the oral cavity, which is also a very important aspect. But yes, that's a good question. Thank you. I can't tell you about inhuman clinical trials yet, like I said, so that's my disclaimer. But so far, so good. Hi. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to point in this direction. Um, <laughs> There we go. Uh, so I'm our friends, but one of the co-hosts for, for here for One Million Cups. I've got like a few different questions, but one of the things I saw recently on your social media that you were in New York uh, with a conference, I was curious and doing some, um, some conversations with maybe potential users. I'm wondering in that customer sort of discovery uh, process, is there anything in particular you learned, anything in particular that surprised you in talking with, with folks in this world? Yes, there's a ton of things we learned. Um, probably one of the most important things that we learned is with the orthodontic market. So we focused basically on brackets and wires, but the white spot and the demineralization is also a problem with the clear aligners. And clear aligners are very, very popular right now, especially since Invisalign has, so the top four players in the ortho market have 70%. And Invisalign has over 30, like 33%. So they're huge, but now their patents have expired and they're getting a lot of competition from like 3M, who's also a big one. A lot of the orthodontists buy the brackets and wires from 3M. So 
I was thinking and talking to these people that maybe we could team up with one of these clear aligners people. And this could be something that sets their clear aligner apart is if we did a clinical trial with their clear aligner and our product, we could show that reduced demineralization, reduced white spots, reduced dental caries and, you know, gingivitis and things like that. That could really be some, give them a huge competitive advantage, especially since they're already established in the market. So that's probably the biggest, most important thing we learned. Hi, I'm Clifton Chadwick with Comunicaciones Coco Pelli, and I am proud to say that I uh, have all my own teeth. I, I paid quite a bit for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not cheap. <laughs> so uh, does this product uh, offer the opportunity to, um, you know, get to the hard to reach places that I'm having a hell of a time flossing in terms of protecting my gums and so forth behind my appliances? Thanks. Exactly. So that's, thank you for the question. That's exactly one of the biggest um, things with this product is you don't have to reach these places with a toothbrush and they will, because of the way they're functionalized, they will seek and destroy the biofilms. So I don't know if you remember like dissolves like from chemistry, they like to be dispersed in these biofilms. So they're going to seek and destroy and find those locations. And then when you turn on your magnetic toothbrush, they're already going to be in the biofilm and they're going to move around and just eradicate that biofilm wherever it is, whether it be below the gum line, you know, in the places you can't reach. If you have a crown with like a little gap in the bottom, I don't know if you guys get those where they put like crowns or fillings and you have areas where you can't really get in there and scrub. These are going to go in there and do that for you. Yes, of course. So, Alicia, can you share your i journey with the people here at the front? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we recently um, participated in the NSF i program with our team. Um, we had started out thinking that we were going to have an OTC toothpaste and toothbrush. <clears throat> we were going to market to all people with teeth. And then we found out it might be very difficult for us to compete with, you know, Crest and Colgate and all those brands and get this thing as an OTC product to start out. And our advantage is more being able to go to these hard to reach places below the gum line in and out of the orthodontic wires. We realized that the orthodontic market was probably going to be our beachhead because they have this current unmet need. The doctors are getting sued because the patients are not actually taking care of their teeth properly, especially the adolescents. Um, people are already used to paying out of pocket for ortho. So parents will prostrate themselves for their kids is what one of the practitioners actually told me. And they're paying about $6,000 already. And they don't want a bad outcome. They don't want the braces taken off that cost them as much as a car. And then they have these unsightly white spots because it is, I mean, it's cosmetic, really. There are a few cases where it's not, but in general, it's cosmetic. So we don't have to mess with insurance because it's already out of pocket. We don't have to worry about getting something that insurance is going to cover, which is going to be faster. The doctors don't care if we 510K this as a medical device, like their, the abrasives that they use to clean their teeth. Those are just medical devices. So the pathway, the regulatory pathway to market for that is much, much faster than if we do an investigational new drug, which is going to be 10 years. So that's another benefit that we found out. Um, and the orthodontists want this as soon as possible. They, they're really interested. So you had one more comment. Would you like to share or question? Sure, real quickly. Um, Lisa, I know there's a lot happening right now at NIH with these kinds of an investigative um, studies. Mm -hmm. Could you get an NIH grant possibly to get your clinicals going? And I agree with you. You don't want this to go the regulatory route. <laughs> <laughs> yep yep that's always lots of fun so yeah we're planning on doing another phase of nsf just to get all the preclinical work done uh, we need to get good manufacturing practices and all these things in place during phase two of nsf and then we're planning on doing uh nih for the clinical trial excellent mm -hmm. any other all questions right. All right, Sonia. All right, well, I have two more questions for you. Um, number one is red or green? 
<laughs> that's that's such a difficult question. My uh, aunt brought I know, right? <laughs> one was red and one was green, and they're in sealed bags. And I was like, which one do I want to open first? <laughs> uh, well, see, that's a perfect answer. And for those of you who are not from New Mexico, that means uh, we're talking about chili. <laughs> Um, and let's see, and what can we as a community do for you? So I'm wondering, <laughs> I'm wondering a lot of things. I'm learning all this as I go. I'm an engineer. This is my actual, this is my second startup. Um, what do you guys think about this? What do you guys think about the market? What do you guys think about <laughs> Who would be interested? I had, you know, some good good comments about maybe when we go and make this into an OTC product. What kind of things? If you saw this on a shelf with like Crest and Colgate and other things, what would make you pick this product? What would make you change what you're do what you've been doing for the past fifty years? You know. Okay. I think uh, what we might want to do. The audience would like to answer that question. <laughs> Great. All right, and then also if you can put your email address in the chat in case anybody mm -hmm. wants to email you on that as well, go ahead, Barbara. Alicia, Alicia, this is Barbara Dawson with Purple Mulch. And yesterday I was at the dentist's office getting my teeth cleaned, mm -hmm. and I I would rather avoid the dentist at all cost. Mm -hmm. And I did wear braces as an adult, so what mm -hmm. you're speaking of makes a lot of sense to me. And I'm going, yeah. OTC, I don't go to Crest, Colgate, all those guys, because they have fluoride, which is poisonous in them. That's right. So, so I use something that doesn't have fluoride. So please don't put fluoride in your toothpaste. No, and no. So to, <laughs> so to me, it's like, what a great OTC product. Awesome. And you know, I think that if, so I see it as a, as a, a big win. So thank you for presenting. Thank you. Thank you so much. A lot of the dentists, orthodontists, even the oral surgeon that I talked to, they don't recommend fluoride. They say fluoride doesn't do anything. And then you have the blood vessels under the tongue that just absorb it. And it's, oh. people are really trying to get away from it. So yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Wow. Very awesome. Nisha, thank you so much. Thank you. We very much appreciate it. Um, keep them coming, please. <laughs> um, all right. So we have the guys online you can't see that we have a packed room. There's about 30 people here at that baby too. We appreciate everybody coming out this morning. Um, and I see a lot of new faces. I see some online. I see some here in person. And we always like new people to be able to introduce themselves. So if you are so inclined, form a lineup here. People online can raise their hand and um, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for your raised hand. If you would like to introduce yourself, we would love to hear from you. Why don't you come up and, and introduce who, who you've got here? Yeah, please. Thank you for speaking to the okay. Um, hi everyone, my name is Eiri Hoshi. I'm the co-founder of Jose LLC based in Japan. I used to work for UNM for 12 years uh, at Step Transfer Office. I moved back to Japan and then tried to actually come in back and forth. And then we're here to learn the innovation ecosystem from you guys. So thank you for having us. And then let me introduce one more person. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yusuke Matsuo uh, from Goka City Government, Japan. Uh, this is actually my first visit to New Mexico State. So very excited. So what's happening here? And then, yeah, I'm very excited to, uh, to see the first presenter. So yeah, it's very good to present. So yeah, I'm looking for the next one, another one. So thank you so much. <laughs> Awesome. So we're here for a week. And red or green? Yeah, <laughs> good question. Any other newbies want to come up and introduce themselves? Come on up, Jeff. Get in front of the camera. Yeah, right, right there. Okay, I'll. Camera's right up here. Okay, I'll be on this side of you. Yeah. 
Hey everyone, uh, glad to meet everyone. Um, I am one of the many uh, remote tech workers uh, that is bored of working from my home. Um, so I work in technical recruiting, specifically hiring software engineers and data scientists for a tech startup uh, focused on carbon sequestration through regenerative agriculture and using satellite imagery to meet some of the verification requirements of that, you know, carbon offset system. So I've been with the company about uh, seven months for a series B, raised about 30, uh, raised about 50 million in total. Uh, we've almost doubled in size since I've came on uh, in the last several months um, and uh, continuing to grow. Um, additionally, I have a uh, recruiting consultancy uh, focusing on uh, machine learning, sustainability, geospatial, uh, and uh, just if you need to attract good people, uh, I can help you set up good systems to do so. But regardless, I am very glad to be out of my house. Uh, so it's so great to see everyone. I recently, I'm born and raised here in Albuquerque, uh, just relocated back uh, a about a year and a half ago. So very excited to get plugged back into the uh, tech community here. Tell us your company. Yeah. Uh, yeah, great uh, point. Regrow Ag. Yeah. Regrow Ag. Ag, yeah. Yes, agriculture. Yeah. Regrow Agriculture. Yeah. It, it's kind they of a should tough present to here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Uh, great. Well, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Lisa. I'm Ted McCormack. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, originally. I went to college with Brian Steiner. So he's the one that invited me nice. over here. Um, I have my own company called Nine Bioinformatics, and what we, we provide bioinformatics solutions to help synthesize DNA sequences. Really? Right. Interesting. Yeah. When are you going to present? I don't know. This is the first time I've been here, so okay. I'll check it out. That's the only requirement, really, is cool. that you come to one. All right. Success. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. No, we haven't had any fakers online. Paul, are you going to be our cheerleader? Sure. Oh, okay. Connection. Connection being made. One more. <laughs> oh, yay. No worries. Um, my name is uh, Zach Burkett. I live in Corrales. Uh, I run a medical distribution business. So the sales reps that uh, all of our dental friends hate coming in their offices. I have a whole crew of them. They run all over the Southwest. Um, also interested though in health equity, um, a lot of that type of stuff, which is why I'm here to try to see stuff, behavioral health, health equity, uh, improving health efficiency. So um, that's what I came for. Thanks. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. All right, guys. So I, I'm here to give you tiny little bits of wisdom to carry you over until next week. Does anyone know what the purpose of a meeting is? When you're meeting people for the first time here, what's the purpose of the meeting? You know, what's the purpose of the meeting? But to me, it's to set the next meeting. So I can exactly. Follow the purpose of the meeting is to get another meeting. All right. So you people that have handed out cards or introduced themselves or shaken hands, that's the first step. The second step is to see if that transient interest can turn into something that you could talk about over a cup of coffee and whether you might be able to help that person, that person might be able to help you. You know stuff they don't know, they know stuff you don't know. So go for it. If you've made that first connection, get that second meeting. See you next week. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Lauren Kerr with N5 Solutions. We, uh, we're in the behavioral health space doing strategic planning and expert management. And I actually realized I have two shout outs this morning. The first one is very long overdue. Phil, if you're still on, I'm sorry it's taken us so long, but Phil Wilton, we presented our company in August and Phil Wilton actually uh, met with us to give us a little um, insight into strategic planning for our company. And with just our presentation and a short conversation, he was really um, just able to dial into some great insight. So thank you so much, Phil. We really appreciated your time. And also I wanna give a shout out to Jason Burnett who's sitting back there. Um, Jason um, has been just a gold mine for us. We uh, have been working with Jason. He's, uh, his expertise is in organizational development. 
and uh, he's been working with us as we put together some workshops on uh, leadership training for behavioral health providers and providing some just great, um, again, great insight and great information and really helping us with that, uh, with that project. So thank you, Jason. Thank you. Just a real quick follow-up because you mentioned Phil. So um, because we're doing some shout outs and because it's sort of International Entrepreneurs Day here at One Million Cups, uh, Phil did have to drop off, but he did let us know he is in the Dominican Republic. He is going to be doing some sunning and some swimming. And he wanted to make sure we all were very well aware of that. So I wanted to share that with you guys here. So, uh, so thanks for bringing him up so I could put that message out there a little bit. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, I won't see you next week. I'm, I'm on vacation. I will be sunning and swimming next week. Eric will be in charge, um, but we do have a great presenter, so please come back next Wednesday. See you later. See you all next week.